we're just going to start this. So I'm going to approach this as I would any new build, uh, whether it's for a customer, whether it's for myself. So I'm going to go in and just set up the basic architecture of the site. So I'm just going to create some blank pages, get them in my navigation. And from there, work on kind of designing a little bit of the header. And then I typically go down into the footer uh, and then start working sort of in between. I always call that like the, the hamburger bun, right? The header and footer, get those out of the way and then work on the content. So uh, what you are going to see is me going just back into the back end. Uh, and again, this is just an out of the box blank install with a couple of blog posts. This is the default WordPress sample page that comes with. Uh, and so I'm going to start here. I'm going to trash this because I don't need this. And uh, again, I'm going to whip through this fairly quickly. We're going to keep questions for the end just so that I can kind of stay fluid. Uh, so I hope you guys can follow and I'll answer anything you might uh, have after we're done. So again, typical personal website, I'm going to kind of treat this as my own. So um, like everybody, let me get rid of some of these bars and boxes that are in my way. Okay, dokie. So we got that. So we have an about page, and I also am gonna have a services page because in my other life I'm gonna be a freelancer, and I'm gonna have a portfolio. So I'm just creating placeholder pages for me to work with. Uh, the blog page uh, will work out of the box for now, uh, and everybody needs a contact page. So those who want to hire me can contact me to let me know. I've got a couple of zingers along the way. Uh, I'll give context as they come. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page. Uh, we are now, we've got uh, these pages came in by default. This is just the navigation block, which will customize because I want to reorder them and do a few other things, uh, like add the blog link and whatnot. And so uh, what I've done is the category, by default, WordPress sets it as uncategorized. I just changed that really quickly to blog, so that way it'll show up that way in my navigation. So I've got my placeholder pages. Uh, again, this is all free form. I'm just winging it, and I hope this turns out. So we're going to go into the editor here, and um, I'm going to click on Patterns. And when you go to Header, Template Part, this allows you to uh, customize the header. And so if I click here, and I'll also open uh, list view so you can see sort of where I'm at. I'm in the navigation block. Uh, again, by default, this just spits out the page list of uh, pages you have. And so if you go here and click edit, it kind of breaks that up into a way you can customize it. Uh, and so I'm going to hit edit, and it's asking me, hey, do you want to do this for sure? I'm going to detach this from the, the regular block that it loads. And so I'm going to go to here. You can see I'm just going to move this around. I'm going to move the contact link over here. I want my services link second. And I'm going to add one more link, just the blog. And so what this will do is pull up the category page for blog, uh, which puts this into my menu. And I want that just inside contact. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And I'll do this back and forth where I'll do some things, and then I'll go to the front end, and we can see the changes that are being made. So if you come here now, you see this now uh, kind of is the way it is. Um, so I am actually now going to go over here. I'm going to change workshop to uh, the WordPress settings here. That's just pulling in the site title. I'm going to change that to my name just because um, we're going to pretend this is me creating this website. So as we go back to the front end, you can see it's Brian Gardner. Uh, and what I want to do in this header right now is I want to do uh, add a site logo because I want to put my face up here. Uh, I think Rich Tabor and others often have sort of a, a like a general sort of there's my face, my avatar, how you recognize me, and then my name. So uh, I'll show us all how that works. So going back into the site editor, clicking on patterns, um, scrolling down here to header. So I'm back in here editing my header. And this is just something that uh, you'll have to follow along. And so we've got a row, which includes the site title. Everything gets highlighted, you can see here, and then the navigation block. But I want to add, uh, as I said, these, oops, this, eh, the quirks of WordPress. Uh, OK, so what I want to do is site logo. And so it's going to ask me to upload it. Uh, I have a little bit prepared myself here for some of these. So this is my smiley face. I want the alt text to be my name because that is good for 
search. And I'm going to select that and you can see it just kind of inserts it. Now, if I were to hit save, you guys can see I uh, do not. Mm, I don't want this to be the icon. I'll explain that later. So what it does is it, it does exactly what I asked it to do, which is just insert this block. And because the row in the header is um, doing space apart, there's an option here I'll show you. Uh, right here, as I highlight it, space between items, all it's doing is just spreading out the space. Now, what I want to do is I want to group the site title and my picture close together. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the order of this because I want that to be first. And then watch me on the left-hand side in list view. I'm going to multi-select here, and then I'm going to do group. And what that does is it groups them together as if they're one piece. And so now the space between is just this group, the two items, and the navigation. So if I do this, we can see that. Now, um, I want to make my photo significantly smaller. So I'm just going to make that 60 pixels. Here you can see image width. Uh, and then I want to make it a I want to make it a rounded photo. So we can do that. Now, what I also want to do, because you can see these two items are stacked, I want to make them side by side. So I believe if I make this a row block, it'll do exactly what I want it to. Uh, go ahead and hit save, and we can see what I do here. Now we've got, so this item here is the row. So that item is off to the left and the navigation's off to the right. Uh, I want to do a little more styling over here, maybe change the size of this text. I want to move it a little bit closer to me. And I'm going to actually do an interesting design thing that I've done recently. Uh, and so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take the site title and I'm going to add a group around it. And I'll tell you why. Because uh, what I want to do is add a little line uh, so you'll see here, I don't know if this will show, maybe a little darker. A one pixel line. And now I want to add a little bit of padding. And we'll see this is sort of a, let me, oops, let me get to padding left. Let's start with 10 and see what happens, maybe 15. I also mentioned I wanted to change the size of my site title. It feels a little too big in this theme. So uh, let's see. That's too small. So the default is that. So we will go, we'll go to medium. Now, when I refresh the page, you'll see there's like this little line. It kind of serves as a separator. It's just like uh, kind of an interesting choice that I like to make. And so uh, I want to uh, change the spacing here. So this is being, so we've got this row and we've got a block app that gets added. So block app is spacing that gets added sort of automatically in between two uh, two blocks. And so by default, Frost uh, has a 30 pixel spacing. So that's why we see this space between site title and group. So I'm going to go here to the styles over here to block spacing, and I'm going to change that to 15. I don't know, not 555. That would be too big. Um, maybe 20. 20 looks like visually. So as I refresh the page, you'll see this section here shift a little bit to the left. And so now we've got this dialed in. And uh, this navigation feels a little bit too big. I'm trying to really kind of go with a simple minimalist look. Uh, so I'm just going to go in over here to the navigation. I'm going to go to settings and font size here. You can see it gets smaller. And these links also feel uh, wide, wide in between. And similarly, that's the block spacing. You'll see here there's a slide toggle. So you can adjust that. You can go to zero. But... Uh, 20 in this design feels a little bit better. So I'm going to add 20 pixels of spacing in between the links. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And there we go. So now we've got my navigation, everything. As I'll just click through, these are all the blank pages that were set up. Uh, this blog is just the default blog. And so uh, we'll start there. So I feel pretty good about the way this header looks. I'm going to um, scroll down. Well, let's go to this and you can see the footer. I'm going to do a little bit of design work down there next. And so I'm going to back out of header and I'm going to go to the footer template part, which allows me to customize uh, the footer. And Sam, uh, please interrupt me if there's a question or something that's uh, unclear uh, or there's something of that nature. I'd be happy to go back and do some things. So there was a question, I, Brian, about why did you detach the nav block? I don't know if that's appropriate now or not, but 
There you go. Yeah, I can answer that quickly. So by default, the block that gets used loads the WP page list, which means if you had 100 pages, 100 links would show up. And when you detach it, what you're doing is saying, I want to customize the navigation myself. So I want to kind of break apart the uh, the block of page list so that I could just do custom links. So uh, what that does is it kind of allows me to like go in. It's like unlocking it a little bit where you can go in and like move the links around. Otherwise, they just get stuck in that order that way. And that's the way it is. So hopefully that helps. Uh, OK, so now I'm in the footer. And I actually want to go with a dark footer. So I'm going to select the entire group that's here. Uh, and you can see I am actually doing this. I want to make this black. And I want to make my text white. And this feels a little bit too. Um, the text, I want to match the size of the text that's in the uh, na uh, navigation. So I think that was extra small. So I just want to make that a little bit smaller. I'll go ahead and hit save. Uh, we can see how this looks down here. So what we've done is just make a simple footer. Uh, we'll start there just because uh, I'll do some more customization uh, in a bit because I've got a couple of ideas that I want to do. Um, and we'll do, actually, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, pivot. So these text links are great, but uh, I'm a designer and I actually want to do social media instead. So <laughs> no jokes about X. This is the new life we live in. So we're going to start with X. I'm just giving fake links here so we can uh, get some icons in here. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of populate this with uh, LinkedIn because a business is important. And having a presence in a business world is very important. I'm going to add two more. Uh, YouTube, because we have a YouTube channel and I want people to see it. Last but not least, uh, rumor has it threads is a thing these days. Uh, that's uh, Mark Zuckerberg Enterprise. And so uh, I want to get rid of this paragraph now because I've got my social media stuff over here. Uh, so I'm just going to go here and hit delete. Now. I also don't like all of this color all over the place. And so if you have the social icons block highlighted, you can come over here to the settings uh, and you've got some options. Uh, I want to go minimal. So I'm going to just choose outline. And what that does is it changes everything to use uh, outline. Uh, you could do things like logos only or pill shaped and things like that. Or you can, you could even do this. I'll just show you guys what this looks like just so you can see it. Uh, you can make them all one color if you want. Uh, but again, I want to do outline. And they feel a little bit too big also. So I'm going to go ahead to size and do small. Now, if I refresh my screen, you'll be able to see what I've done. So I've left this intact. And that now I've got my social, social media icons down here. Uh, so for header and footer, this feels pretty good. Actually, there's one more thing I want to do up here in the header now that I think about it. Uh, I want this contact. Uh, link to be a little bit more prominent. And so one of the things that's newer to WordPress as I back out and go into the header template part, uh, WordPress allows people to now over here on the right-hand side, add a button into the menu, the navigation block. Why that's important is because then on mobile, uh, when you click sort of the hamburger icon and it brings in the modal, uh, it's link, 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 and the button is actually included in it. And that is a huge thing, something that's relatively new uh, and I love. So if I hit the plus button and then click button, uh, I can do this. I'm just going to actually do contact. Well, you know what? Let's say get started. So more of a call to action. We'll leave contact in place. Uh, and we'll just give this a fake link just to get over. This also feels a little bit too big. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is modify things a little bit. Uh, I'm going to do the padding. That that feels a little bit better. Uh, go ahead and hit save and we can see what that looks like. So now we can see that that's part of this. OK, so now we're going to uh, do the about page. And let's see. We're going to try to wing something really fun here. So bear with me while I do this. Um, OK, so I'm going to say write an about page for Brian Gardner 
WordPress designer who loves minimalism and coffee and Sarah McLaughlin. Uh, I'm doing this so I can grab some copy to put into my about page. And so uh, also to showcase the powers of ChatGPT. So I'm going to go to about. Uh, first thing I want to do is add my photo because that's what we do. Uh, I also have this handy right here, BG about. Going to hit open. Alt text, good for accessibility and SEO. Put my name in there. I'm going to go back to ChatGPT and it's got a lot to say about me. So we'll look at this and hopefully, oh, there we go. Perfect. <laughs> Simplify one pixel at a time. It's amazing, right? How, how well it knows us. I'm going to select all this text. Um, this is actually pretty cool. I may end up using some of this in the real world stuff. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit paste. Uh, so there's an about page. This looks like a, a Automatically it gives uh, an H4 tag uh, on a page like this. I probably want to do H2s for these little sections. Uh, so bear with me while I just make some edits. Connecting is good. This text in this theme feels way too big. So I'm going to knock everything down to 24. Uh, and this is how easy it is to do things just within the site and page editor of WordPress. You can go in and do all of these things. And it's amazing how quickly, once you know where all the controls are, how quickly you can do this. So I'm going to hit update. We're going to uh, refresh the screen and we're going to click the about page. And now I have an about page. Uh, so next up services and this is where I'm going to get a little, oops, wrong one. My apologies. Uh, services. So I'm going to design this one on the fly. I have an idea of what I want to do. Let's see how well this is going to end up working. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to try to do a full width section with kind of the traditional like feature box, like an icon, a little heading, and a little bit of text. Maybe I want to have six of those. I've got six design related, WordPress related services. And so bear with me while I build this. So I'm in here. First thing I'm going to do is go to page and under template, uh, I'm going to select the no title template. What that does is it allows me to use uh, a page template that doesn't output the title. Uh, and it also allows me to um, go full width on some things. And so I'm going to add a group. Uh, actually, wide width is probably what I'll do. Uh, I'm going to go here to wide width. And I'm going to add the columns box. I want three sections that span across. Um, so this columns also needs to be wide width. So you can see now this becomes bigger. And so in this column, uh, I want to add an image. I'm going to, oops, I'm going to upload. I have a sample icon here handy, Snowflake. And so I'm going to write sample icon and alt text again, good best practice. So we'll do some styling here afterwards. Um, so I'm in my column. Now I want to add a heading. We're just going to call minimalist design and then a little bit of a paragraph. Uh, let's see. A simple approach is the one and only way to build a WordPress web site. So I'm going to do a status update. We're going to go to my services page. And so we obviously have some work to do here. This There's some spacing things that we want to do. Uh, and so what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to take this group. I'm going to make it go full width and I'll explain why. Um, what I want to do is add some padding top and bottom to this entire group. Left and right, this kind of gives it a little bit of a gutter. Go ahead and hit save and this starts to to feel better. Now, I also want to add really quickly um, to the really simple, um, let's do a heading to say my services. And then the, oops, these are the ways you can work with me. Again, a lot of us here on this call are designers, developers, builders of WordPress websites. So this should feel very much 
similar to the way maybe you do some things, maybe this is an H1 because it's the page title. Uh, I'm going to take these two items and I'm going to group them also so that they are sort of one unit. And because I do that, I am now able to change the spacing in between. Um, so you can see block spacing. Maybe I want to move that up even more. And so, and for those who are new, so now we have this at the bottom. That's kind of annoying. But what WordPress allows you to do is drag things up. And now we have that. Uh, so I want to do a little bit of styling here. Let's say 24, oops, wow. And I want to center this image in this column. This I also want to center. Uh, should be an H2, but feels too big. So we're going to make that a, and then this, actually, you know what? We're going to keep these not, sometimes center is boring. Now, so what I want to do, is I want to change inside of the column block spacing again. Um, you can see if I zero it out, does that. Maybe this feels better. Uh, I'm going to hit update. Let's just see how this looks. OK, so this starts to feel a whole lot better. Uh, now, I like the way this looks. This is kind of a cool, kind of, kind of a cool look. Um, so another great thing WordPress allows you to do is duplicate things. So what it, I want to do this three times across, right? So I'm going to duplicate it. And I got to remove these extra sort of orphan columns that I started with. So now I'm back to my three columns. Uh, and I want to add a little spacing in between left and right just to give them some room to breathe. So we're going to go back to block spacing. Um, this is the step scale here. In Frost, every step is 20 pixels. So we've got 20, 40, 60, 80. 80 and 100, excuse me. And so let's just do 60. And what this will do is, now we've got this. Um, I don't like this much space up here, so I'm going to figure out what to do there. And I want to add more space right here. Uh, and so this group, uh, top padding, I'm going to whip through a little bit just to save some time. And then these columns, like I said, I wanted to add a little more spacing, so I'll go top margin there and maybe do something like this. See how this looks. There we go. Uh, and as I mentioned, we wanted to do six and also want to change the spacing here. Let's just see how things look. All right. So this is a very quick version. Of course, we can probably go a little bit further. Each one of these might be different, but in the spirit of uh, creating that page, uh, this will work. Um, next up, we're going to go to the portfolio. Um, and so similarly, I'm going to actually do a cheat code. Um, so I'm going to copy this entire thing by just doing it. And I often do this as a way to expedite, not have to rebuild everything. I'm going to copy everything on that page. Uh, I'm going to go into the portfolio page. I'm going to go back here to the, temp the template, select no title. I'm going to go right here, and then I'm just going to literally command V and paste it all. Uh, I just didn't want to have to recreate the group and all the titles. So this is going to change my portfolio. These are the awesome things I have designed. Hey, Brian, and then what I'm going to... Yep. Stop, pause you for just a second. Um, just because there's a question that says, why not grab a pre-designed pattern instead of using columns and doing so much manually? But I just want to clarify uh, what you're showing in this workshop. Yes. So in this workshop, I'm showing you the manual way to build this all. Um, it would have been easy and this call would have lasted five minutes if I were to use the patterns that are available in Frost because so many of the patterns that are in Frost are things that I've done. So from a builder's perspective, that's a fantastic question and I'm glad you interrupted me. Um, I will actually really quickly, uh, let me save this first. Uh, if you go to uh, editor and then you click on patterns here, these are all the patterns that come in Frost. There's 48 of them. Uh, many of them are like we've you know talked about ways that you can one click insert this and customize this. Um, so good to clarify. Uh, there are themes that have patterns that do all of the things I'm showing you. I'm just showing you how to build those things. Uh, and so, yes, you can also just do one click inserts as well. So hopefully that clarifies. 
Uh, so I'm on my portfolio page, I don't need these two columns. So I'm just going to literally just select them both and delete them, get them out of the way. Delete blocks, I'm left with my header. And so I want to add um, a gallery because I've got some screenshots that I'm going to use. Lucky for me, I have eight of them. So these are all, let's just pretend these are projects. Uh, what they are, are style variations of Frost just to use as examples. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit open. Normally I'd alt, te alt, alt text them too, but in the spirit of time, I won't go through and do all of that. I'm going to create a new gallery. I want to insert the gallery. And so uh, I want these images full size and let me see how they come in. So we'll go here. Okay. So we see here that it's this gallery is being constrained by the content width, which is 640 pixels. But if I click on the gallery and then this icon, see, you'll see here, there's nothing specified. So it just takes the 640 default. Uh, I want to make them go full or excuse me, wide width. And so if I do that, and because I have eight, maybe I want to do something like this just looks better. So I'm going to go ahead and update and we'll see now what it did. So two things happened. One is it obviously made it four columns. Uh, number two is uh, changing the width of that gallery allowed me to go to 1200 pixels, which is sort of the site width here. So everything lines up. And I want to add a little bit more spacing above this because that's what we want to do from a design standpoint. And update. And so one other thing that WordPress allows, and I'll just do it on one, then I'll do the magenta one. Um, well, let's start with full size because these all look better full size. This is the, yep, okay. Just take a second. So WordPress has now sort of this light box effect. You can see here when you have an image selected, this expand on click, if you select that, I'm going to update and watch what happens. Uh, so this is super useful. So now we've, so you can see there's like a little inspector thing. And it does this. I don't know yet that there's a, an intent to sort of do like a, a navigational way where you could click on one and then like go to the other. If you think of like a real estate listing where you go through like picture to picture. Um, but in the meantime, uh, at a minimum, there is this effect now where you can do that, which is really, really cool. And it's a nice animation. So this is the portfolio, and uh, now we've got the blog. Uh, I'm going to do this really quickly because we are going to run into a time thing. Uh, so I will show you what we're going to do here. So I'm back in the site editor. Uh, I'm going to go under templates, and I'm going to click archives. This handles the archive page template, so like on the blog category. Um, I want to, and there are other themes here that will also have patterns that allow you to change the way that these loops work or whatnot. So um, there is a way to sort of swap that out, but in the spirit of showing you what we're gonna, what we wanna do. Um, so I'm gonna select the query loop here and see, you could replace it with something else. Uh, I'm gonna select the post template actually, cause if you click on this icon here, we can now change this into a grid view. And what I wanna do is, Go wide width, gonna do a quick refresh on my blog. Yep, the double save button. And this here, uh, we may wanna center that. That's this group here. So, um, and oh, the spacing's fine. So several things here from a designer's perspective that I don't like that I'm going to change. So I'm going to go into this, the excerpt, uh, way too long and way too big. So as we just go through, I can change this. Uh, this title also feels too big. And we'll just save this and see what this looks like. All right, so we got blog here, we've got this. Obviously you can see there's a whole bunch of spacing things that may or may not work for you. So I think if I select this group, we're gonna change the block spacing to reduce the size. Oops, that's the wrong one. Let me reset that. This is the one I want. Nope. 
Now this is what happens. So excerpt. Every once in a while you get caught. Let's see if this did it. No. So I'm going to take the excerpt. Does it allow me to change the margin on top? Yes. That's another way to do it. Hmm. Well, we're going to we're going to enjoy this spacing. We like the spacing now. Um, I'm going to go back into here because the other thing we want to add is the featured image. Uh, it puts it down there. I can use the arrow to move it. Uh, I'll do some spacing stuff here. We're going to add some bottom margin. Oops, it's already selected. And I um, don't have them yet, but I'll do it next. So nothing happened because I did not assign any, and I have them ready. So I'm just going to quickly go into my six posts. Um, I'm just going to select one at a time really quickly. I'm going to hit save, and then we'll see what this looks like, and then we can move on to the next one. Oops, two. Wanted to do this in front of everyone here because I thought I would have cheated if I would have preloaded everything because we're trying to do this from scratch. So hope you don't mind the work. Uh, is that four maybe? Oh boy, I lost I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Uh, okay, so maybe we're bottom going up. Okay, so this is five. Last but not least, the featured image. Well, we'll see what happens. I'm gonna refresh. Okay, so the power of blocks needs one. Uh, I got ahead of myself. Uh, we'll select this one. So now we have a blog page that's got featured images above it. Uh, you can change the aspect ratio if you want them square or if you want to do something uh, different. Spacing in between here, maybe that feels too big or too, um, or not. So we'll just go into the template archive. I am going back into list view. So I'm in the post template, and I believe this, you can see here what happens. Uh, maybe we want it really tight for some reason. Uh, so you can see that that. That feels maybe too tight, so I'll just bump it one. And so now we've got a blog. So we've so far built the about page with some great copy uh, services page. Obviously, we could do more stuff here by add other types of images or whatever. Uh, the portfolio with the cool effect, uh, the blog, and a contact page. Now, this is where we're going to jump into uh, a little bit of fresh waters because um, while there are several great contact plugins out there, Ninja Forms, WP Forms, um, Gravity Forms, uh, WordPress is introducing a forms block. Now, it's experimental and it's only available right now during uh, the installation of the Gutenberg plugin. And so, for those of you who don't know, the Gutenberg plugin is sort of the experimental playground for functionality that ultimately makes its way into WordPress core. And so it's on a two week cadence. And I think they're actually gonna be releasing the release candidate of 17.6 today, uh, but they release it every two weeks. And so I'm actually gonna go into the here. Uh, you can auto install this from the dashboard. Sam's gonna drop a link to uh, the Gutenberg plugin. Usually it's right here. And so I'm just gonna quickly walk through how to, how to do this just so we could build our contact page. I'm going to activate the plugin. And then over here in the menu, you've got uh, what's called experiments. And so as you can see right here, form and input blocks, you want to check that because uh, this is experimental. So what I'm going to do is go into my contact page. Uh, we'll keep this one simple and just say, please fill out the form below and I will be in touch. And I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to, add this. So this is kind of what comes up. Um, by default, this actually doesn't look too bad. Name, email address, comment, submit. Uh, over here on the right hand side, you can do a couple of things. Uh, you have the option to just send an email address and you just type your email address right here and you click update. 
and we'll go to the contact page and refresh. And uh, why I like this is because uh, much uh, experience, I'm sure people know when you have a plugin that's active that has uh, front end stuff, uh, often you'll see that it's opinionated with its styles. And so you do a lot of manual overrides, a lot of important tags or whatever. But the WordPress block, um, it takes the input fields and the button because it's built with WordPress core functionality. And generally, uh, the theme which defines this in its style sheet, out of the box, this kind of looks just like it fits and matches and works seamlessly. Uh, so uh, a couple things here. Uh, I don't know if I want inline label. Maybe, I don't know if there's a way to, I'll have to look into that. Uh, I was just trying to see if we can even just get rid of the name, email, and comment altogether, but uh, we won't bother with that one. So now we've got, this is the front page, which is by default the WordPress loop. Uh, we've built an about page, a services page, a portfolio page, blog page, the get started link. Um, and so I'm uh, just gonna show a couple of little design things that are also neat. Um, also as part of this, I'm gonna, Frost has uh, blocks uh, styles, which allows you to sort of change quickly uh, keep an eye on this blue thing up here in the corner. Uh, so you can change the palette to different colors. I kind of like magenta. So I'm just going to hit save. Now, one more thing I want to add to this is I want to add like a big call to action bar above my footer. And so I'm going to actually go back into my patterns here in my footer. I'm going to go back and edit my footer, and I'm going to just start with the group. I'm going to, inside of this, let's, we've got to zero out that block gap. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, tap, that was zero. I want to set the background color of that group, we're gonna do something cool. We're gonna do this, uh, I'm gonna move it up because I want it above the footer. And I'm going to create a row. I'll explain why, because here we're gonna add a paragraph that says, click here to start your awesome project. And on the other side, we're gonna do a call to action button that says, let's do this. Now, obviously you can see we've got some styling to do. So I'm gonna go back and uh, select that whole group. Uh, we're gonna change the text color to white. Gonna do a few more things. We're just gonna add a little bit of padding. Uh, Gutenberg plugin strikes again. Uh, feels like too much. Uh, this row, we want to make it wide width. Again, going to add some padding left and right, 30 pixels. Uh, this, we want to make a button, right? That's a button. So we want to maybe do something like this. And we want to go in the row. We want to separate this. And this text is going to be significantly bigger, even bigger than that. Oh, that's too big. Yeah, that's even a little bit too big. Uh, we'll go 48. I'm gonna hit save. We can just quickly see what we've got here. Now we've got a big call to action um, as well. I think I'm gonna disable Gutenberg for the time being, just cause this should change my text. Okay, so we've got this. That button looks pretty good. I'm just gonna do a quick uh, little bit more work on it because that's what designers do. Maybe we wanna make that 36, this button. Maybe we wanna make it a little bit bigger. So we're just gonna, you know, maybe that. So as we refresh the screen, now we've kind of got this cool call to action bar and we've got our footer and now, last 
I got two more tricks. One, and I generally build um, content on the main pages first because usually a home page can sometimes be sort of like a um, like a mix of all of the things that we've got here. So we've got about we've got the services portfolio. Um, so what we're able to do is I'm going to create a, a new page called Home. I'm going to do this one quickly. I'm going to publish this page. I'm going to go to settings reading. I'm going to set this as the home page. Now I'm also going to open a new tab so I can do some quick copy and pasting. Um, okay, so I want to edit the home page. I want to grab content from the services page. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and just copy this entire thing. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to undo this quickly. So this group, we want to make wide width because we're just going to, yeah. I'm going to refresh my homepage now just so we can quickly see kind of, okay, while well, we've, we're building some sections, I'm going to go back to the portfolio. Uh, similarly, I'm just going to grab all this stuff and I'll move it down at some point. So I've pasted the portfolio. Again, we're going to undo the center. We're going to make, oops. Let's go wide width. Back in the list view, I want to move this below my services. And you can quickly see how you can do this. Now, uh, I'm going to do one more section up at the top, just a quick about me with my photo. I'm going to copy this right here. Uh, and then Almost done. So I'm going to add one more group. This will kind of be like the hero section. Going to make that um, wide width. Add some padding at the top. Add my gutters. Uh, I'm going to do columns. 50-50. I can tweak that in a bit. Um, we're going to add a, a welcome. Welcome to my personal website. Below that, I'm just pasting this text, which is a little bit of a, and here I'm going to add, let's just do 240 by 240. Uh, we'll do this. Now I refresh the page. This is what we've got. Uh, I wanna make the group here. This should make it wide width. Uh, we're gonna do a little, little tweaking here. We're gonna make this group full width, make the columns inside of it wide width. And this, I wanna actually use the, I'm gonna use the aspect ratio on this one. It might chop me off a little bit because I'm not centered, um, but if I do that, uh, and so now this should go 50-50. That's way too big. And so uh, I'm going to do mm, 60, 40, um, maybe 75, 25, actually 75% and 25% just to see what this looks like. Now, if I hit update, this is better. Again, we can play with this and tweak this all we want. Um, one really cool thing about the columns block is that you can vertically align this. So when you do this, you can see that. So uh, in this section, now there's too much white, which is never a bad thing. Uh, I'm going to take this group here. Watch what I do. So we're going to take the services. We're just going to um, maybe add some background to it to kind of give it a separation layer. So now we've got this. And we want to make this uh, heading bigger. So welcome to my personal, <clears throat> excuse me, personal website. Uh, I don't like this 7525, so I'm going to make that 6040 just to make that feel a little bit better. 
This might be something you can talk through while you're doing this, Brian, but there's a question. Why are you editing the homepage and not the template for the homepage? That is a fantastic question. Um, that's a can of worms in its own workshop. WordPress has um, a couple of different templates, home.html, front-page.html, and some of them get complicated because if you use one over the other, it kind of disallows you. Uh, you can, Frost itself ships with a home template. Uh, I don't ever like editing the home template just because it's easier to like accidentally clear customizations. And because there's a few other caveats that I won't get into here just regarding uh, takeover of like a blog page uh, thing that's available also. Um, I know that's not a great answer, but uh, I always like to just go in and like create a brand new page because also what that allows me to do is if I want to test things or tweak things, it's easy to then change uh, the setting to just point to a different page. Like if I want to create like a homepage alt, if I'm doing some split testing, it's easy to just change and switch over to that. Uh, and so I am trying my best to sort of work around that sort of nuance with WordPress. I'm just going to do a couple of style tweaks here just to move this up. Uh, so again, it's easier for like anybody to just create a page and edit a page in the page editor that they're used to, and then just assign that to the front page. Uh, you can edit again, the template that's there. I feel like it kind of brings you into a world where you're like, am I editing my page or my template? In that case, it's the same kind of feels like inception. Um, but in this case, it's just, it's cleaner to just do all your, my, I prefer to do all my content editing um, in one place. And because it allows me to do things uh, like control SEO, if like you have Yoast or Rank Math installed, you can like on an edit page screen, fill out all of that uh, information. You can assign um, a featured image to it also. So that like for uh, Open Graph, if you share a link to your site, it'll go to the, it's using a, a WordPress page, which then has these things, the metadata associated with it. So there's a number of reasons why one might want to do that. Um, I was going to build a link page, but no time for that because we're we're kind of running down. But I want to show one more really cool thing that's coming to WordPress, and I think it's going to change the game on a number of levels. So I'm going to go back and re reinstall the uh, the Gutenberg reactivate the Gutenberg plugin. Um, up until now, uh, updating fonts within a theme was a hard coded thing or a plugin thing. Right there was like, how do I change the fonts? I like outfit, Brian. I know it's your personal favorite, and you'll die on that hill. But I want something different. I need a different font. Uh, there's no easy way right now, other than to go into the theme and do a lot of work inside of theme JSON, uploading theme files to a theme, or uh, excuse me, font files to a theme. But I'm going to show you now, auto magically, how easy it's going to be. This is, I believe, coming in 6.5. I think it was supposed to be in 6.4 and 6.3, but the there's a lot of work that's being done on it to get it right, accessibility and otherwise. And so I have Gutenberg active 17.5.2. Again, 17.6 will be out um, next week. The release candidate, I think, either might have just been released or it should be today. Uh, I am going to go into the site editor. I'm going to go here. Oops, editing a page, I don't really care. So this little icon up here, the styles icon, this is, and this is another workshop. This is just the global styles that allows you to change styles throughout the entire site. Uh, if you click on typography with Gutenberg active, you see this little icon. And what this does is it opens up a modal that allows you to manage fonts. Now you can do a couple of things. Uh, you can click on install fonts here. And if you allow access, you can go search the Google font directory and basically pick whatever fonts in whatever weights you want, and then it'll load it. Uh, in my case, I'm going to use a font called Avenir, uh, which is a very timeless modern font. Looks a lot like uh, Outfit, probably explains why I like it. But I've had a mad love affair with Avenir over the years. Uh, so I'm going to do this. I have these fonts locally here. And so these are all the font files for Avenir and all the weights. And I kind of did this so it's easy to look at. The .wav2, I think you could, there's several formats I think they you can see here on the screen. It supports many. I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to slide them right here. Now, if I go back to library, you, you'll see outfit is my theme font, but now I have just like that. What it does is it takes the fonts and it adds them to WP content slash fonts. So it's 
uh, when you do this, it's not tied to the theme anymore. The theme can use it and pull it in because it's part of this API. But if you were to switch out of Frost and go to a different theme like 2024, these fonts would still be there. So I'm going to update this and I'm going to close out. And now I'm going to universally change the text on my entire site to Avenir. You'll see it all change. And I'm going to save and I'm going to refresh. And now everything on my site is using Avenir. Now there's probably some things we can do. Um, that's just the, the main text. So like the headings, uh, Avenir, and maybe I want to do a different weight. Avenir, I don't know. We'll go Super Bowl just for. And so again, everything is now using the Avenir font. And so that's kind of a fun little bonus uh, when designing sites. Now there's different ways you could obviously bring fonts in. Uh, now there's no really a need for a third party plugin to do just that. It's gonna be part of WordPress core. Uh, I think this will become a, a monumental step forward in uh, no code uh, web design. So I wanna leave a few minutes. I, I can go past uh, the top of the hour. I, I know I went through quickly. I know I probably skipped over some, some steps and sort of shorthanded things. Uh, but I do want to leave uh, some time for questions because I just went through a whole lot. Uh, this is not polished by any stretch, but in 52 minutes, I think I did a pretty good job building the foundation of a website.